So as you know, the jury had several options, kind of several tiers here with respect to E. Jean Carroll's accusation of rape. They could find Donald Trump liable of rape, of sexual abuse, of unwanted touching, or of course nothing at all. So they kind of went with the middle option here. Why do you think that is? Well, in order to prove rape in a case like this, the judge instructed the jurors that they would need to prove, essentially find, that there was sexual penetration as opposed to just a sexual battery, meaning unwanted sexual touching. So it may have been that the jury believed that there was an encounter in this clothing store, that they believed everything that she said except for not believing that the president had physically raped her or penetrated her, for lack of a better term. But they still did find that there was unwanted sexual touching, which is what led to the liability finding on the sexual abuse and battery finding. And we know now the jury awarded $2 million in damages for the sexual abuse, but closer to $3 million in damages for defamation. Any of this surprising to you? What do you make of this? I think it's a really big deal because many people would argue that this is the first time that the former president has ever been actually held accountable for his lies and for statements that he makes pretty much whenever he feels comfortable saying it, even if he's denying statements that people make. The second thing here is that the defamation claim actually showed that she has reputational damage as a result of the president lying. And he's now doubling down today. As Ed Harding just commented, he has now gone back on Truth Social and called this a hoax and a witch hunt. And he is likely exposing himself to additional liability for doubling down on the claims that she was making this up. So I don't think that this case ends now. And it could very well be that he's facing future charges or future civil claims by victims of his attack. All right, so he never appeared in the courtroom during this case. You think that did him damage with this jury? I mean, her lawyers kind of hammered him for that, saying he could come here, face you, say, I didn't do it, but he didn't do that. It's a very difficult thing to put the defendant on the stand when the accusations are of this nature. Plus, he's running for president again. So if he were to take the stand in a federal civil trial, it would be the biggest story that anybody is covering and paying attention to. He may have made a political decision to not appear in front of a jury in order to be held accountable or defend himself because he wanted to protect his political interests. But it appears that the jurors made him pay for that, both literally and figuratively, because this jury verdict essentially says that the victim was right that the victim was not making this story up, and more importantly, that when President Trump said that she was not somebody that was his type and not somebody who was telling the truth, that that lie needs to be held accountable. And that's what the defamation count is all about. All right, WCVB's legal analyst, Greg Henning, thank you so much for your time thank and for you. your input.